The Man Who Ate Curses There was a gardener by the name of Inosuke who lived in Yotsuya Minami Igacho. One day, he was working in a daimyo's residence in Owarihan when he put a mat down to rest for lunch. As he did, a snake attempted to crawl over it. He reached for his axe and immediately cut its head off. The head went flying, but to where, he didn't know. That night, when he got home, Inosuke took the lid off his rice pot to find the snake's head inside. He wasn't in the least surprised, but instead swiftly stabbed it with his knife, stuck it on a skewer to roast, and then ate it as a snack with his sake. The next day, Inosuke woke to discover a lump on his head. This type of lump was nothing significant to him, so he went about his day as normal. But it grew larger. Soon, it was larger than a centimetre in length and started to get itchy, so he grabbed his knife and cut it off at the base. He carefully washed the wound and then covered it in ointment, but when he looked at the lump he cut off, he realised that there were maggots inside it. The maggots must have been the snake's continuing curse, he thought, so he squished them with his hammer, mixed them into his salted fish entrails, and ate the entire thing. He suffered no disturbance after that, and his wound healed completely. Red Sleeved Woman A man by the name of Mikura was staying at a hot spring in Tasuno, Shimotsuke province. Each night, a woman of barely 20 with red short sleeves and a purple belt snuck into their room while he was asleep to sleep with the man he was lodging with. One night, however, Mikura caught a glimpse of her. What an oddly beautiful woman for such a mountain village, he thought. That's strange. He attempted to follow her when she left, but when the woman was deep in the mountains, she suddenly disappeared. He returned to his lodging and asked his partner, Who was that woman? What is your relationship with her? We are sharing the same bed, yes, but I do not know where she comes from, he answered. Mikura told the man of what he had seen, and then said to himself, When she comes again tonight, prepare yourself. That night, the woman attempted to enter the man's sleeping chambers as always, blissfully unaware. Mikura drew his katana and swung. The woman screamed and disappeared. He didn't know what she was, but there was no denying that the woman was a goblin. People gathered around and peered at the dreadful amount of blood in the torchlight. They followed the blood trail deep into the mountains and, inside a cave, they found the woman dead. There was no change in the woman's form, even as a corpse, but Mikura realised that what he thought to be red sleeves were actually red leaves. The woman was a mountain witch, as he was later informed by an elderly priest. Anago of Matsue A man from Tajima province visited Izumo a few years back. He visited a place called Matsue, where there lived a ten-year-old boy named Anago. He thought that a strange name for a child, so he asked the locals, Why is that child called Anago? This is the story they told him. When Anago's mother was pregnant with him, she suddenly took ill and died. Her husband was overcome with grief and said to his wife's father, It's too soon. Please leave the body here with me for just a few days. I do not wish to part from her yet. The woman's father grew angry. You cannot leave her dead body in the house? That's preposterous! Bury her at once! The man buried her that same day, yet he grieved for her so much that he lay over her grave for three days and three nights. How pitiful, the villagers who saw him remarked. As there is life, so there must be death. No matter how sad he feels, Does he really have to go that far? And so, on midnight of the third night, the man heard the voice of a crying baby from inside the grave. What's this? 
the man thought, and immediately grabbed a hoe from his house. He dug up the grave and found his wife at once revived, shocking him. She had also given birth, so the man was overjoyed. They all returned home. After that, his wife recovered favourably, and their child grew up healthy as well. And that is why they called the child Anago, Child of the Hole. The Old Man Who Stole the Rice Ball There was a large mountain in Echigo province called Mount Tonami. A god lived on the mountain, and it was said that those who travelled deep into it never came out again. And so, lumberjacks and hunters would never dare step foot on it. But there was an audacious donin by the name of Fukami Hachido, who lived in a village near the mountain. It is said there are, above all, many magnificent trees deep within that mountain, but because that god is also there, the treasure is going to waste. I will enter the mountain and ascertain whether there are truly any monsters there or not, he said. Holding the famous sword that had been passed down in his family for generations, Hachiro entered the mountain with his faithful dog by his side. As they went further in, their path that could barely be called a path was obstructed by fallen trees. He could not say that it was steep, but the hardy Hachiro jumped over the obstacles and continued jumping over them as he progressed. Before long, the area before him became so densely packed with trees and so dark that he was unable to find a place to push his own body through. Then, his dog that had come all this way with him suddenly became timid and cowered at his feet. Hachido grew angry. You think I'm going to go back now? After coming all this way? He grabbed the dog and shoved him through the trees. Moments later, the dog came flying back at his face, howling. Unafraid, Hachido picked his dog up again and shoved him back through the trees. But this time, the dog came back in too. Hachido fell into a fit of rage and savagely cut down the trees. He pushed his way through, but there was nothing strange before him at all. Simply an open space. There were no pines, nor oaks, nor any other trees. Rocks were spread over the ground and it was frightfully clean. There was a large boulder which, if one was to exaggerate, looked like a folding screen. When he climbed the rock and looked around in all four directions, it truly looked like a fairyland spread out beneath him. Hachiro decided to take a break. He gathered some nearby branches to start a fire. Once he was warm, his fighting spirit blew up once more. He removed a rice ball from his hip to have some lunch, but then he heard a sound and felt the presence of someone nearby. Suspicious, he listened closer. He discovered a small grotto behind him, which he had not seen, and from within it, a small man, no larger than an infant, came crawling out. The face was like that of a small child, but he had grey hair, and so Hachiro assumed him to be an old man. The old man did not move while Hachiro watched him. Hachiro went to take a bite of his rice ball, but then suddenly the tiny old man reached out to grab it. Righteously angry, Hachiro skewered the rice ball with his sword and waved it in front of the old man. If you take it, then I will kill you with this. But the old man wasted no time and swallowed the rice ball in a single mouthful. Hachiro tried to stab the old man, but found himself unable to move, like his limbs were buried. All he could do was sit there. When the old man was done eating both the rice ball and the sword, he quietly returned to the grotto. Hachiro was able to move once more and ran back home, perplexed. He promptly took ill and slept for more than 100 days straight. I heard this story from a person who saw the remains of the sword that little old man ate. I wonder, just who was he? How strange it all is. Nojukubi 
You can of course find them on country roads, but they also lurk on highways and mountain roads as well. Nobody left these flames behind, and yet they float in the air with no one around before disappearing. Once they disappear, they then reappear once more. These flames that seem to permeate the ground, appearing and disappearing, are called nojukubi. You can often find them in the remains of beggars who have woken early and left, or in the remains of people's outings. After the rain, the flames flare up and dance, and if you peek through the trees, it's just like watching a gathering of people quarrelling. Both lonely and creepy, sending a shiver down your spine. That's just what a nojukubi is. <laughs>